Good evening. Welcome to Hardfire. This, as I promised last week, is part two of our special edition devoted to the 9-11 controversies. My guest is Les Jameson. You remember him from last week. We left off at a rather provocative point in the discussion. Uh, Les showed us uh, a video of an explosion at the World Trade Center, the collapse of one of the Twin Towers, and we saw a puff of smoke, an ejecta, coming out of the building. Les contends this is suggestive of uh, explosives in the building. I was arguing that this is compressed air being forced out mm -hmm. by the, the weight of the collapsing structure. Now, I mentioned that the Loisou family, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing their name, uh, Control Demolitions, Inc., is the largest company in the country devoted to taking down buildings, and they, they described the theory that explosives were used in the World Trade Center as ludicrous. Les objected to that. Now, here's my problem. If they are lying, they are complicit in mass murder. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you don't have a problem with that. Well, I uh, am as shocked as anybody, but uh, when I look at a lot of other uh, events in history, uh, even the last 40, 50 years, uh, there have been massive lies told to the American public, experiments done on the, uh, the American public, whether we go back to the Nevada desert, the tests of the uh, uh, atom bomb, where troops were right there in, in the, mm. uh, the field of the, John uh, the Wayne's fallout. John Wayne's film crew. Yeah, yeah John yeah. Wayne's film crew. And uh, the mo most recent, well, after 9 11, the major uh, uh, situation with the EPA lie saying that the air was safe to breathe. And uh, we Why have do you hundreds of thousands. assume, though, that it's a lie rather than they simply screwed up? Oh, because uh, <laughs> evidence was that uh, originally. Uh, Christy Todd Whitman was going to say, uh, yes, uh, there's a concern here with the air quality, and then she was told by people within the White House to not do that, to, to say the air was safe to breathe. And uh, well, we've, we've, been, we've been... Why would they we've want been in people touch, to get sick we, from we, toxic fumes? What's the point? The, the point is they... This is uh, what we have to realistically be uh, considering here. The point is getting Wall Street uh, functioning was more important and getting people shopping and getting people to uh, not be afraid to be out in that area and also the uh, the first responders and the cleanup crews uh, I would say th that was their overriding uh, concern okay now there's something to what you say but mm -hmm. you you're, you're opening a can of worms here I mean this I know there are viewers out there who are saying, well, yeah, now ask them about, and here's what they would want mm. me to ask you about. Mm. The whole point of the conspiracy is to start a war, right? I mean, we, we must agree on that. The conspiracy has no purpose other than to get us in a war with right. Afghanistan so, and Iraq. Right, right. that has a lot to do now, with Now, yeah. given that, once you fly planes into buildings, mm -hmm. you've started a war. I mean, that's beyond dispute. No, no, no one can, can argue that, well, maybe we'd overlook the fact that planes were flown into buildings. No, that's a war. Mm -hmm. Now, bringing down the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. if it wasn't otherwise going to fall, in other words, if you reject the notion that the impact of the planes mm -hmm. and the ensuing fires caused the building to fall, mm -hmm. if they purposely brought the World Trade Center down, mm -hmm. wh what kind of conspiracy of idiots are we talking about? Well, in other words, they've started their mm -hmm. war and now they're doing something that delivers a massive blow to the economy of New York City, midwife's a recession, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for which Bush will be blamed. Now, people out there are saying, come on, get real. You know, this is preposterous. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't know, but we would think it would uh, bring about a recession, but if actually if there was a recession before that. The economy was going into the it tank. It was in a recovery. Be before 9 that. 9 11 delivered a trillion the, dollar hit on the, the economy. The, the, the stock market was down eight or 900 points just before this. And uh, 9 11 was um, a, a huge infusion to, uh, to the Bush presidency. 9 11 was a massive blow to the economy, particularly here in New York City. It wrecked the economy of New York City. Uh, it was uh, a trillion dollar hit. Now you're saying, 
well, if they did this to start a war, okay, that's okay. that's one thing to argue. Okay. But right. the war has started. The planes hit the building. The right, war right. I get started. your I get your point. I get yeah. your point. Why would they have to go to the extra uh, measure of bringing down the They're towers? They're using resources and manpower. They're adding a okay. great deal of work, sure. and it's all to their disadvantage. But uh, here's a, the other considerations: is those towers were actually huge. What do you call them? White elephants. The uh, most valuable property in the country. They were loaded with asbestos. They were, they, they were, they were built big in the late problems. 60s. They were big problems. Yeah, uh, but they, you know, rip them down. They, 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 they would have cost uh, billions and billions of dollars to to mitigate. Uh, so they should debate. rip down the Empire State Building so because it was seventy years old. No, but these these towers. Uh, uh, this is another area that should be investigated. Uh, uh, that, uh, that it would have taken an awful lot of uh, investment to uh, make those buildings uh, up to code and, uh, I mean, a modern. But so to, to, to destroy them, uh, to, to wreck the surrounding blocks, to deliver this yeah. kind of blow to the financial center. This, yes. yes, it was a brilliant stroke by yes. the, the Muslims, yes. by the uh, Islamic terrorists. They, they hit us hard. Well, you I, know, I, I mean, would, we, we don't know. It's evil, but they deserve credit. We don't, we don't know. We but don't if we know. did it to ourselves, that's like giving yourself a hot foot. We, well, uh, it, it worked. It worked. It enraged. It did what the neocons wanted in the Project for New American Century document called Rebuilding America's Defenses. It created a catastrophic, catal uh, catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, which then set the stage for everything we've been going through now with the Patriot Act, the un uh, undermining of civil liberties, the uh, sp uh, wiretapping here, of course, two invasions, and, and uh, a uh, hugely um, increased military budget, so uh, there's all, all those things. What does that do Bush? Well, uh, it, it does Bush in the uh, military and industrial complex a lot of good in, in their wow. views. So, Do you think that Bush has derived any benefits at all from 9-11 in the last um, three years? They, he, he uses it every week, every chance he well, gets. Then why did he well, invade then, Iraq? I mean, we, we have to agree that Iraq almost cost him his real Well, he invaded Iraq uh, because uh, that was the agenda from when he first got in office. We know that. Uh, I, I, I agree. I think, that, I think that Bush wanted to mm -hmm. overthrow Saddam yeah, Hussein yeah, from the moment yeah, he's in. Yeah. But we can't pretend that it worked to his advantage. I mean, the invasion of Iraq practically cost him the election. It, uh, well, he's it, sitting on he approval ratings of 78 percent or he, thereabouts, and then he invades Iraq. They don't find the weapons of mass destruction. Right. His, his that's approval a, rating plummets. I, I would say that's a, it's a different topic. You, know, you yeah. have to go into the mismanagement of uh, the whole operation and everything. And, uh, but, but you see where I'm going, though? People look at this notion of a conspiracy, a, and they <clears> say this is like a... It's like a shaggy dog story. I keep hearing the buildup, and mm -hmm. I keep waiting for the punchline. And yes, well, they did this because it leads to that, and that led to this. And the payoff is that Bush is sitting on 38% uh, approval ratings. He's going back to Texas in three years, and the Republicans look yeah, to lose both yeah. houses. I guess the, what, what, what's the punchline here? The, what, what's the payoff? Well, the, the American people uh, know that uh, the agenda was war to start with, and a lot of people, a, a recent Zogby poll indicated that uh, 40 two percent of Americans don't believe the uh, America, uh, the, the government's official account of 9-11. So, uh, yeah, seventy are, percent of Americans believe in angels. I mean, you know, where do you want to go from there? Oh, that's, how that, many that's people, come on. That's, how many people believe that's, in astrology? That's, a, that's, a, that's a very, very far-fetched there. Come on. <laughs> but it's that's, true. I mean, I mean uh, Americans tend to be 42, superstitious. Doesn't that concern you? I mean, doesn't that, is that it? It concerns me for the quote that I read from Charles Saunders Pierce, that people can't distinguish uh, reality from spin. Uh, that, that people have no way of separating or objective truth from someone's well, promotion. Well, we could argue, though, that people are a lot smarter than the government would, uh, uh, would, would give them smart. credit for, yeah, and, and they're seeing through the, uh, you know, the lie, seeing through the, uh, the, the ridiculous uh, obfuscation. But with that, I, I brought, Ron, uh, quite a few visuals. Okay, we'll take a let's, look. Let's take a look at the first and one. And tell us what's the first one. Yes, the first one is a picture of the uh, top of one of the towers, and what we're looking at here is uh, arches of plumes of smoke and debris just basically blowing off. The, the top of the building is blowing off. You see 
uh, ejections of, st of steel, girders, and, and th this pulverization. It's there clearly was, collapsing. The, the pulver, the, 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 there was 440,000 cubic tons of concrete poured in these buildings. They, they pulverized in, into dust in 10 seconds. That's well, what we're looking at. Well, actually about 15, but close enough. Close enough. I've heard from 10 to 14 at the most. It's yeah. basically still uh, virtually free fall. Well, again, people talk about the, the free fall fallacy, and the, the point is that the building's free falling would have taken about 9 seconds, 9.1 if you want to be very precise. Mm -hmm. And the actual collapse time is um, 14, 15, some have said about as little as 13. Uh, right, and uh, according to P Professor Judy Wood of Clemson, who's a um, Professor of Mechanical Engineering. She's a dental engineer. She's a professor of mechanical engineering. Yeah, but she's a dental engineer. I mean, that she's one of these uh, scholars for, for truth. So. She's a professor. Uh, you know, I'll send, I'll send you her credentials. Yeah, but she's it's not, she's she's not she's a got, structural she's got, engineer. She, yeah, she's got a, a degree in civil engineering yeah. as well. And, and uh, she put together a billiard ball model uh, showing that the uh, physics of this and the timing where the tower should have taken anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds. Yeah, Dr. Frank Greening, who is, a, I'm going to put in a plug for Dr. Greening, is an mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant guy. He mm -hmm. has, uh, well, <laughs> he's got a, a bachelor's of science in chemistry from King's College. He has a PhD in physical chemi chemistry and molecular spec spectroscopy at McMaster's University in Hamilton. He has uh, postdoctoral fellowships. He has uh, published several papers that are available through 911myths.com. Uh, check the section on controlled demolitions. Now, uh, Dr. Greening's first paper deals with free fall and the collapse of the structure itself. Again, we're not mm -hmm. trying to make your eyes glaze over here with the science class. Let's now, what are we looking at? The next one is uh, Building 7, which was not hit by any plane, yet fell uh, eight hours after the attacks at uh, 520 in the afternoon and uh, what you're seeing here is the top of the building look how it dips this is another indication of controlled demolition it's imploding in on itself if you turn that photo around and you look at the other side of the building you will see 20 floors of heavy damage now this and is the side that's a little deceptive. The other side will show you 20 floors it's still, of heavy it's damage. It still would not call, cause a, a symmetrical collapse like that. It wasn't symmetrical. It destroyed, uh, uh, yeah. what was it, number, well, we number might, 30 across we, the street? You, you're going to see It didn't a, a fall video. straight down. It fell, if, did a lot of we, damage. If we don't get a chance, uh, just go to WTC7.net and you'll see the video right online. It, yeah. it, it's straight down symmetric. I think it's 30 Water Street across the street that was damaged by the fall of uh, World Trade Center 7. Yeah. Incidentally, the NIST mm -hmm. report on uh, the fall mm -hmm. of World Trade Center 7 isn't out yet. They're expecting it in a few months. You, you that's, can, that's what they said uh, yeah. uh, a year ago. <laughs> it, it's true. I, I spoke to Mike Newman at mm -hmm. NIST, and he says, you know, we put out a 298-page report that's available at NIST.gov, N-I-S-T, National Institute of Standards and Technology. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, look, we're very proud of our work. We don't debate this topic. We simply investigate the collapse of buildings. When uh, they looked at the collapse yeah, of the was, high regency, no I was at several of their hearings. Yeah. It was amazing how they uh, basically would only show certain portions of, of footage in, in pictures and uh, uh, a lot of information. For instance, Willie Rodriguez, who's a, uh, a janitor who was uh, employed in the North Tower, he was the last one out alive. He, he had contacted them contacted them four times trying to give them information of oh, hearing not explosives. Not quite. He and shows up at the hearings, but when they and try they, to they meet him, would never, he they never, would never shows up. They would never contact him back. Oh, they try, but he changes his address. He wants money. No, he changes his address. He won't show. That's not what happened. If, well, if he did change his address, it's because yeah. uh, uh, he, he, he had to move. show up. They, he they would like to talk to him. He doesn't show up. That, that's, I, I know him personally. He's, he's been Ask him, him to show up. He, Mike Newman says they'd like to talk to him. Well, that, that could be easily arranged. Yeah. You know. But uh, again, I, I haven't read every page of 298 pages of the NIST well, report. I'm just saying that I, I was there at, yeah. at, at several of yeah, them. Yeah, he shows up at the hearings, but when they, they try to arrange to meet with him, he's elusive. Uh, like yeah, the giant squid. The, the, the last time... Uh, 
uh, let's see, it was summer of uh, 2005, and, and he, he was there. They could have questioned him right then and there. They could have arranged to it. And he was saying, I contacted you four times. You never got in touch with me. No, that's not their story, though. You know, and, and again, look, their, their attitude is we are a government agency. We're not here to debate. We're proud of our work. We stand by it, you know. Now he's, I asked him, I said, are there any, uh, any corrections for the major report? Mm -hmm. You know, when you released the report no. on World Trade Center 7, yeah. they said, no, we are standing. We believe we understand the collapse of the building, and it's presented in I our don't report. Know. How, how Again, viewers yeah. are invited to check yeah. it out. They, they also, NIST uh, should be asked to explain how it was that all th three times in one day, uh, three steel frame, I'm sorry, three steel frame buildings could uh, collapse when it's never happened before due to fire. Well, they were hit by planes. Even though they were hit by planes, two of them, three, yeah. the third one was not. But and, it was heavily and, damaged by debris. And it, it was and not anywhere near damage. I think uh, the Deutsche Bank building also took Deutsche heavy, Bank took heavy damage, damage but and didn't it go didn't, down. didn't go on fire. You know? yeah. And, and uh, uh, it still would not have caused uh, uh, the, the symmetric collapse of Building 7. Uh, and, but but the, the main point is it must be understood that in history, only on the day of 9-11 have steel frame buildings fallen. And the buildings, uh, the two towers, one and two, were built to withstand the impact of, of a Boeing 707, which is comparable mm -hmm. to the 767s. Yeah, but again, that, that's thrown around a lot, but the Boeing 7... Even Thomas Eager, yeah. who, MIT, MIT professor who is in support of the official theory, says that the planes did not have a, a strong impact in, in bringing the towers no, down. No, what you're saying is true to this degree. Uh, everyone agrees that the impact itself mm -hmm. didn't knock the buildings down. Yeah. Now, uh, Newman so, explained to me the reason one building fell faster than the other uh, the mm -hmm. angle at which the plane hit. In other words, when the plane plows straight through and more or less distributes the impact evenly and their fires evenly spaced, mm -hmm. that building is going to stand up longer than the plane that sliced through at the corner and deposited an intense amount of heat in a certain area. Uh, that sounds backwards to me. The uh, I, 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 it's funny because I said to him, gee, that to my layman's mind sounds a little counterintuitive, yeah, and yeah. then he explained it to me. He yeah. said, no. What you have to understand, uh, people who say that the amount of fireproofing involved was a factor, they're really missing the point. The impact and the fires knocks the fireproofing away. Okay. Uh, it's as nice. though the fireproofing isn't there anymore. Let's, let's take a look at yeah. the next We'll visual. look at the next one. Okay. Now, we're, we're looking here at the Pentagon. Uh, we see a, a unscathed lawn. Um, a man looking on, and right there in about the middle of the picture, right in the middle is where uh, the entrance hole is to what we're told is a 757, uh, you know, full-size commercial jet. Now, uh, I've heard that hole described as uh, 16 feet wide when in fact it was 75 feet wide. 75. And the plane I'd like penetrated. You, I'd, like you, the, I'd like you to see. The plane you, penetrated three rings. Right. the five rings of the Pentagon. There's, there's whatever it was, we think it's a missile, not a plane. Well, and what uh, about the people the, killed the, the on the whole, flight? The hole is uh, 16 feet wide, and where, where's, uh, how come the, the lawn is not dug up here? Uh, let's, uh, let's move on. Anyway, uh, folks, we just need to understand that uh, recently, about two months ago, uh, there was all this hype about a new video of the, what hit the Pentagon. It was nothing. Uh, knew about it, and uh, there were 84 surveillance videos there, and we'd like to see them. Why is the government not uh, releasing them all? I Let's agree it was overhyped, but the Pentagon didn't hype it. They, they didn't say that they had anything new to show here. Yes, they did. They they said there was people a new, making new, that claim. It was, it was uh, a Pentagon saying there was a new angle uh, here. How about the next photo? And uh, We'll move on to the next one. Now we're still looking at the Pentagon. Okay. Right here we have this tiny rubble pile of Building 7. And this is another uh, piece of evidence here that calls into question what brought that building down. I mean, if this is a, a, a collapse, why did it, would it be this tiny, neat pile here? And in in yeah, fairness, oh. though, shouldn't we uh, defer a discussion of uh, World Trade Center 7 until the NIST report is out? I mean, Newman said to me simply, there's nothing mysterious about the collapse, but you, you, know, you, you do have you, to wait to read the paper. How can, how can there be nothing mysterious? Yeah. Because um, 
Well, it's, again, it's they, very, they feel they've explained these collapses. There's, this, there's nothing this, inexplicable this, about what, what happened. Well, well, we have to dispute that. This, what, right now we're looking at a photo that uh, was uh, brought out by Professor Stephen Jones of BYU, uh, physics professor. And the, the bright red streak in, in the bottom here is what he's claiming is, is molten metal, uh, which oh, will only be made... the yellow? Yes. Uh, well, that's yes. aluminum. Yes. Uh, I mean, there's two million kilotons of aluminum cladding around the World Trade Center. Then you have the aluminum fuselages of the planes themselves. Yeah. Now, I would be getting in far over my head if I discussed the chemistry mm -hmm. here, but Dr. Frank Greening, who again impresses me more than anyone I've encountered recently, has a whole paper on the aluminum problem in the uh, involving, involved with the World Trade Center. Well, we have what we have here, and we see in this uh, like shimmering streak down the center here. Is, that is, is aluminum. That's, that's, that's a molten metal. Yeah. That's molten but metal. But the color suggests it's aluminum. It's, it's, it's melted. That's, that's as yeah. a result and of... And again, uh, the sources, the planes you know, themselves have aluminum fuselages and the cladding. And what would right. cause that kind of heat? Uh, they don't... Uh, I've seen that. photos on some of the websites showing a plane skidding to a halt mm -hmm. on a bad landing and bursting into flames. And an hour later, the fuselage is totally consumed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it was, uh, you know, shot down by a Sidewinder missile or something. When in fact, all that happened was, it skidded to a bad landing and burst into flames. Uh, you know, I mean, fire. unfortunately, now, these things are fragile. What we're looking at here uh, is a picture of seven of the alleged hijackers who re are reported by the BBC and the UK Telegraph, uh, uh, a few sources of uh, in the British press, as a ha being alive. And this is in the weeks after 9-11, and uh, this has never been explained, never been cleared, well, uh, cleared up by the FBI. And a and, uh, matter of fact, uh, Robert Mueller, FBI head, uh, had to say twice on CNN that uh, the FBI actually does not even have uh, full documentation and proof of the identity of these hijackers. But he said that uh, before February of 2002, at that point they determined they knew exactly who they were, and in fact, this issue of uh, are some of them still alive? No, all 19 of them are dead, and a few people with the same name have turned up in countries, just as you would expect that there is probably it's, more than one Stephen Jones it's, in America. It's very fishy. That, right. How could they have them in 24 hours? And here we're looking at two bin Ladens, uh, and, and within hours of the attacks, they had bin Laden's face on TV. And within 24 yeah. hours, they had these hijackers. Yet, uh, supposedly, you know, they had, there was no indication. Nobody had any inkling uh, that this was uh, going to happen. How could that be? On the left, we have a picture from the video uh, that was released in December of 2001, or I should say found in yeah. Jamalabad, Pakistan. The so-called confession video. The con so-called confession video. And this is clearly a different person. If you look at the nose, you look at the eyebrows, uh, the forehead. Uh, so... Uh, now, a fellow named Mark Roberts brought uh, this to my attention. He said, look, this still on the left is taken from the confession video. But if you look at the whole video, it's obviously Bin Laden, and this is just a bad picture. I mean, it looks like his cheeks are crinkled up, and well, if you do that, your nose is going to appear shorter. He said, watch the whole video, and you will see a long-nosed, six-foot-four Bin Laden. Well, we, we can do that. Yes. We can watch see, the whole video. And that's I, I would saying. say every, every aspect of the video is that face. Yeah. That face right there. Uh, again, I haven't watched this video. Roberts assures me that you'll yeah. see a long-nosed Bin Laden. No, that's not. Uh, you'll, you'll have to watch it. Yeah. I, I would challenge everybody to watch that. Now, over here, this is the new uh, angle, supposedly, that uh, the Pentagon has released of what hit it. And if you look over to the right, all you see, you see a tiny tip of something, uh, okay, and then that was it. That was it. That's, we're supposed to believe that's a, a commercial airliner, and uh, people have done models of showing the proportion of what a real jet would, are the size we, of it would be. Are we supposed to disbelieve the dozens of eyewitnesses who saw an, a 757 crash into the Pentagon? We are sp supposed to question. Uh, there you know, is where, records where, from a 757 that was recovered at the site. There, there, there's not, not the main don't. fuselage. Exactly. I, I won't uh, pr pretend that we've recovered the main fuselage, which was destroyed. Yes, but there is plain wreckage. There, there, at the there site. are there are tiny pieces of uh, yeah. of aluminum. What could have been uh, a piece of a global hawk. That's what uh, investigators believe. And uh, 
Yeah. And the investigators called it a Boeing 757. Now that yeah. is an explosion of what? That's the impact? That's the impact, this huge, strangely colored fireball. And uh, so why is it that we're not seeing uh, you know, clear video footage? of what hit that. It's, it's, it's the secrecy and the destruction of evidence that has happened. It's, it's just unbelievable. We I hate to, to do this to you, but yeah. we're naturally pressed for time. Okay. I wanted to it's, mention one quote by a woman who was very helpful to me. Uh, here, 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 again, go, go ahead, you can yeah. tell us what this is. Yes, uh, this is tampering with evidence. So why, why are these guys picking up evidence well, at the scene of a they? crime. Are they supposed to be picking no, it up? No, they shouldn't be touching this. Uh, I mean, when you say tampering, someone has to pick it up. Maybe these are the right, people who are supposed yeah, to pick it, it up. It's supposed to be left there. The NTSB is supposed to uh, do the investigation. Well, who, who are they? Uh, these, this, uh, these are Pentagon employees right there. Yeah. Um, a woman at Boeing, Liz Verdier, who is one of their spokesmen, she's in the area of, of safety concerns, she wanted me to include this quote no commercial airliner made by Boeing can be flown by remote control, period. This is something that crops up again and again on the conspiracy sites. They say, well, you know, they controlled the planes. No, they didn't control a Boeing 757s. They can't. They cannot be flown by remote control. Now, again, if you want to say that the people at Boeing are lying, then they are complicit in mass murder. Uh, incidentally, now mm -hmm. I've never really pinned mm -hmm. you down on this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this conspiracy uh, includes hundreds and thousands of people? Um, first, I want to make a comment about the planes. At least uh, the one that hit the Pentagon. We're told that Hani Hanjour was the pilot. Yeah, and, and he had a pilot's license. And uh, we have footage of his uh, flight instructor said that he was a terrible pilot. No, they said he couldn't land he, a Cessna. He, he couldn't land a Cessna. That doesn't he mean couldn't. he can't steer a plane into a building. It, it means that there's no way he could do the maneuver of the 270 degree turn. I asked a pilot highly, in my neighborhood. I live in Kew Gardens and a and lot especially, of airlines. Especially the, the, the G-forces that would, that would have taken. The pilot said, you could do it, meaning me. Uh, not, he not, said, not that turn. That, okay. Well, once again, we've run out of time. Oh, I, I, I thank you so much for coming in and sharing your thoughts with us. It shows, the, as I said, the courage of conviction. Pleasure talking you to too. you. Thank, thank you, you and good night for Hard Fire. <laughs>